I bought a 100 ounce bar and of course immediately afterwards silver's price crashed down over a pound an ounce. Whoa, that happens actually more than I would care to admit, but I'm not really that bothered about that kind of situation. I do however want to talk about the fact that gold and silver prices went up considerably last week and have crashed down very quickly this week. What on earth is going on? Let's dive in and talk a little bit about gold and silver's pricing. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome to another Precious Metal Ramble. So, insert title about gold prices, sky high, all time high, here. I guess that's what a lot of other channels are talking about right now. And they jumped on the bandwagon when things were very high over the weekend and then there was a pretty big peak, actually, first thing on the uh, opening of the markets, and then it's, of course, dropped down again. And it, of course, has dropped down again because I bought a 100-ounce silver bar on Monday morning, and uh, lo and behold, pound an ounce less for silver over that next 24 hours. So it is what it is. Sometimes the markets go down as well as up. You wouldn't know it to look at a lot of the different content that's out there talking about gold prices reaching that all-time high. That said, I do think there's some really interesting information that we can glean from the recent all-time highs and the fact that there was this sort of ceiling um, that seemed to not want to be sustained or then breached even further. What's it actually going to take to get this stuff here really going even higher, sky high? And do we even want that in the first place? There's a lot to unpack in this video, so I hope you will enjoy some of my thoughts and opinions on the subject. And if you do, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to share your own thoughts and opinions, then please feel free to do so down in the comment section. So uh, I will just first of all premise this by going, uh, it, the markets didn't go down simply because I bought a 100 ounce bar, but sometimes it definitely does feel that way. And there are a lot of people out there who firmly believe that the gold and silver markets are deliberately manipulated and the huge spikes in prices that we saw at the end of last week and then first thing for trading open uh, where it really smashed through some very all-time high ceilings uh, was then tamped down well no it wasn't really in my opinion there is no cabal of people out there looking to make sure that silver and gold are kept at low prices it is not a thing it's just simply gold was at all-time highs and what do you do when things are at all-time highs you sell them and you make money that is the nature of this market and gold is a commodity that is traded and people will buy it and then sell it when the opportune moment comes along to make some money. So we have this ceiling that seemingly exists right now with gold and silver's price points and I do think that that ceiling will go up in time. It, we've sort of seen it being pushed and pushed and pushed. Every time we see this new little high we get this, uh, you know, this big sell-off and things are pushed back down a little bit and then it trickles back upwards again to those highs and maybe those next highs will be slightly higher than the highs that came before. So there's a lot to sort of really understand about these markets for gold, bigger macroeconomic effects out there than just us stackers as well. We have to remember that we are not the ones that control this market. So whilst there isn't, in my opinion, a conspiracy that's there to keep the gold price low, there are a lot of players out there, big and small in this market, that even when combined, all the small players have a little bit of a buying influence and market influence, I should say. Um, but in general terms, we are here for the ride as stackers. We have to just accept that prices will go up and then they will probably come back down again. So from that perspective, I am really not too worried and bothered about it. Am I buying a lot of gold right now? No, the answer, the honest answer. That gold-silver ratio for me is very much saying it's time to look to buy more silver. And when products like this come along on the second-hand market, I can't say no to them, especially at a really good price, even though I could have got it a bit cheaper. Now, we're talking about prices a lot in this video, and I do want to just quickly segue into a bit of a sponsored spot for a very, very awesome company that offers silver bars and gold coins out at incredibly low prices. Spot price for gold at the moment and silver bars at one of the most competitive rates, even more competitive sometimes than, than I am on the second-hand market, which is an incredible thing in itself. So a quick word from our sponsor, 
Auronum. So a big welcome back to Auronum, who are today's video sponsor. If you don't know who they are, they are a UK-based bullion dealer, very active on the Silver Forum, and I've seen them put deals up at spot price for gold and absolutely dirt cheap silver as well. So well worth checking out. There's a link in the description to their website as well as their Silver Forum profile. But they asked me today not to focus on the things that they've currently got for sale, but instead to have a look at their gold price news report section of their website. And most specifically, this very cool tool here, the heat map almost of the world's currencies versus gold, silver or platinum. It's a really interesting tool and certainly one that I've been enjoying playing with and seeing the different currency values and how gold has been reacting, uh, well currencies I should say, have been reacting to that increase or decrease in gold price relative to their currencies. Now this particular chart is very customizable, you can put anything in here, the, uh, the metal type that you want and then the dates. The data goes all the way back to I think December 2018, which is Quite useful really to see pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, how things have gone. But you can just see even on this 24-hour period here, the 5th of December to the 6th of December, uh, we see that there are some countries out there that are a little bit red, which means that the price of gold relative to their currencies have gone down a little bit. So Australia down 0.19%, whereas the UK are marginally up 0.06. And here we can see Russia doing quite well, 3.46. But we've got to remember what that actually means. It means the currency that they've got in their country, the ruble, doing not so well, minus 3.46 essentially percent. I mean, there are different ways to look at it. But that, I think, is a really interesting tool straight off the bat. What is most interesting is when we go back, uh, ooh, if we do, this would be quicker, if we go back to December 2018, so the 6th of December to the 6th of December, so that's five years. Let's have a look and see what gold's performance has been like in that time period. Well, that is certainly interesting, a swathe of green. So we can see that relative to the price of your currency, things have done very well. There is a big splodge of red here for Venezuela and a big splodge of red for Bangladesh. I'm not particularly familiar with Bangladesh, but of course we've all heard about the Venezuelan uh, currency crisis. So that I think is an interesting tool just to see. But you can see all the different percentages that have gone up. We see, of course, here, let's go back to Russia, 127.79% increase on that relative value, whereas in the United Kingdom, 65.64, the US, 63.31. Let's have a look at silver and see what that has done over the period. So here we see silver similar to gold, 66%. 68.91, so silver done a little bit better over that same time period for the UK, and a lot better for Russia at 132%. There are a few countries, of course, that don't have any data here in Central Africa, and uh, weirdly, I think that is, I don't know, I want to say that's Estonia, but I could be wrong, it could be Lithuania. I think, no, Estonia is the one at the top, there we go. Um, and that's Latvia, so that must be Lithuania, and rather strangely, Belgium, it looks like, is missing some data. But... It's a pretty cool tool, nevertheless. We can also have a look at platinum as well. Let's go over that time period. So you can see platinum, not as good in certain countries. In fact, platinum has been a dead loser over that same time period. And certainly from a percentage wise, we can see huge differences there. Still very good for Russia, of course, but we all know perhaps why those issues are existing. So really good tool. Have a look at it, have a play of it. You can even embed this into your own website as well. They've got the link to do that just here. So a really cool, a uh, little app, little product to have there, and a very interesting uh, exposition of gold and silver prices as they have been over the last few years. So now back to the video about my own purchases of gold and silver. So a huge thank you to Auronum for their sponsorship of our channel. It's much appreciated. And it's nice to work with a small ethical company here in the United Kingdom for a change. So go and check them out. Links in the description box below. So yes, uh, you know, we have a lot of data out there about gold and silver, as you can see from Auronum's website. There's a whole host of different tools and things. And I think the main thing that we learn from uh, the sort of tools that we've seen there, including that heat map of the world currencies versus precious metals, is that this stuff is not a short-term trading uh, platform, especially if you're doing the physical side of things. If you're just doing numbers on a screen, then totally you can actually get some really good returns. And I do know, in fact, a good friend of mine who uh, exclusively buys silver only through uh, the vaulting companies. He bought low and sold he had an automatic sell order when gold, uh, sorry, when silver hit, I think it was £640 a kilo. And he's happy. He made some money. And he's going to rebuy when silver goes down. That's the nature of these markets. The upside here is if he buys and things don't go up immediately or don't go up in the short term, the long term effect 
is most evident. And we've just got to look at that. And we can see the, I was talking earlier in the video about ceilings for silver and gold being uh, a certain point, and then they maybe get pushed up a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further. But we've also got to look at the bottom line for gold and silver, because those are also being edged up a little bit as well. We look back 10 years and we see silver and gold in that peak of 2011 being very, very high relative to their price in, in money terms today. Certainly for silver, you know, for 50 pounds an ounce, I think it was, or $50 an ounce, it's 30 pounds an ounce, something like that. Really expensive spot price. But when you look at it now, the lows that they were having back after that big crash of nine pounds an ounce, will we ever get back to nine pounds an ounce for silver? Will this 100 ounce bar ever trade again for under a thousand pounds? No, in my opinion, there's no chance of that. We have this all new low that is out there. And I do think that that low for silver right now in pounds terms sits around the sort of 15, 16 pounds an ounce mark. I don't think that we'll see silver ever dip probably not even to that level, but even lower than that, no chance in my opinion. Gold, we are seeing you know, sustained happiness for buying at around the 1550, 1600 mark even. People are still happily buying gold all the time. I've sold an awful lot of it in the last year of the Backyard Bullion Buyers Club. And I think that in five years time, we will be looking back at 1600 pounds an ounce gold with envy going, well, that should have been the time to really fill your boots, so to speak. And, uh, you know, that is the nature of gold and silver. But what we shouldn't really focus on is the short term ups and downs of the markets. Yes, it's interesting to see these all time highs come out. And it's interesting to go uh, and analyze these data points and find out where things might be in the future. But there's no guarantee of those kind of things. There's no guarantee of where prices will be come a year's time, two years time, five years time. It's important to remember that. And especially over a weekend where prices hit all time highs and you see nothing but huge, incredible thumbnails with the world is ending and silver and gold's time to shine is now. And then all of a sudden you've bought and it was crashed down in price. It, it sucks. It, it really does suck to, I'm not going to lie, you know, if I'd waited well, to be honest, if I'd waited, this wouldn't have been for sale anymore. Someone else would have bought it. But if I had waited just 24 hours, I would have potentially saved myself nearly £100 on this bar. But then you could argue, well, if I waited five years, I would lose out on a lot of money because arguably it would be worth more than that in the time. So you can never really justify one way or the other. There's always counter arguments to it and it's important to remember that. And if you're buying for the right reasons and you're able to hold for the right reasons, then that is the best course of action that you can take in my opinion. So there we have a 100 ounce bar that caused the crash in the silver price. And we have gold that lost a significant amount of value in the blink of an eye. But hey, that's the nature of the markets. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section on the recent highs we've had for silver and gold, well, for gold at least, and the upticks in silver that we've been seeing. It'd be great to hear from you down in the comment section. A big thank you once again to Auronum for their sponsorship of today's video. Go and check them out. There's a link in the description and use their incredible tools that they've got on their website to help better understand the world of silver and gold pricing. Otherwise, that's it from me. We'll see you on the next video. Oh, massive shout out to the Cool Kids Club members and the Backyard Bullying, Backyard Bullying Society members as well. You guys rock. We'll see you next time. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.